Hey guys, it's Vince. Uh, head on over to club.vincegabriel.com. That's a membership site where you can try it out for 60 days for a buck. In that membership site, you're going to get two months worth of marketing ideas, marketing coaching, marketing newsletters. Everything you need to get new clients to your gym is in there, and you're going to get access to that for 60 days for just a buck. Head on over to club.vincegabriel.com, and I'll see you inside. Peace. What's up, guys? I'm back with part number two. This part's going to be a little shorter just because I'm about my at my destination. Uh, I told you guys I'm driving to a college uh, buddy's funeral. It's right now, and now it's 3.20 in the morning. Um as I'm, as I'm driving to get to Ohio uh, for this event that I wouldn't miss for the world. But um, so we did the first three lessons learned and let's continue with lesson number four. So uh, what do I got here? So lesson uh, number four is a concept in business called who not how and it's been getting a, a lot of um, a lot of publicity as of late, and which is great. But I, I read the book a long time ago, and I've heard this concept um, may, for many years uh, from a guy named Dean Jackson, who actually invented the concept, and then it was taken by Dan Sullivan and. I think his name's Ben Hardy, and they wrote a book called Who Not How, but it's really originally comes from Dean Jackson, um, who's just a brilliant marketer, by the way. Um, but Who Not How is a concept of when we want to get something done, we, we think about it in terms of human effort, right, or the problem that we need to solve, and we roll up our sleeves and we get to it. So, for example, all right, I got a... I gotta hire a trainer, right? And you're a gym owner, and you're, I gotta hire a trainer. My other trainer just quit, and I gotta do this. And you think, well, how am I gonna get this done? How am I gonna hire this trainer? All right, well, I gotta go write the job ad, and then what else I gotta do? Well, I gotta go, you know, put the ad up on Indeed and start, you know, collecting resumes and all, do all the stuff, and I gotta do the interviews, okay? And you you take everything from a mentality of how am I going to get this done? And the problem is that's what causes burnout. What causes burnout is doing too much shit. And there's a there's a concept that I um, that I teach that I learned from EOS, and it's called GWC. And GWC is like whenever you're dealing with an issue with a specific person. You have to run it through what's called GWC, right? And giving credit where credit is due to EOS. Um, but uh, G GWC stands for get it, want it, and capacity to do it. So if someone on your team is struggling, you have to look at it, those three things. Do they actually get it? Do they understand what the job is, right? Do they understand what the job is? Do they have the personality to do the job? Do they have the intelligence to do the job? And so that's number one is get it. The second one is want it. Do they actually want to do that job? And I've made this mistake before where it's like I wanted someone to sit in the role of general manager or marketer, but they didn't want it. And that will never work. They can't not want it, right? And um, the third is, and this is the what I'm talking about, the third is capacity. Right, and capacity is the time and the energy and the, and, the, and the resources to be able to get the job done. And this is where I see a lot of entrepreneurs, um, you know, and gym owners fall short is they run out of capacity and they try and do too much themselves, and that's what causes burnout. And I think a big cause of this burnout is the how mentality how am I going to get this done? How am I going to do this? And at, at, at one part, it, it helps us, right? At one part is we're productive, we take action, we get it done, and that is a you know do or die mentality that probably serves some of you pretty well. 
but it doesn't serve you well in the long term. It doesn't serve you well in actually creating personal freedom because you're never going to be free if you're always doing stuff yourself. And that's the so the concept of who not how is really based on almost saving yourself. But also recognizing that you can maybe put your ego aside and realize that there's someone that probably can do it better than you. And so if you take the example of hiring, um, you know, the one part about hiring that I think gym owners should do if they're skilled in marketing is write the job ad because that's marketing. Writing a job ad is marketing. That's going to be one of my lessons later of how important that lesson is to be able to write a good ad. job ad is just as important as write a good marketing ad. Right? Um, well, I got to make sure I'm going to make the right turn to Philadelphia here. Um, anywho, I'll figure it out. So, um, where was I? Yeah, so, so but, but going back to this hiring thing, um, that may not be the best thing for you to do is to go on Indeed to do all of that stuff. Find someone that can do that for you. Find someone that can weed through all the resumes. Find someone that will post the job at Indeed. Find someone. So the question you ask yourself is not, how am I going to get this done? The question you ask yourself is, who can help me do this? Or who can do this for me? And the story of this for me, the biggest game changer for me was when I asked this question about this in my sports performance program. And we had, and when the pandemic hit, we shut the program down and we, I wanted to bring it back. And I knew I did not have the time and the energy and the resources to bring it back myself. I knew I didn't have it. And so the question, because I read this, um, concept, um, the question became, all right, who can help me do this? And I knew I didn't have the person on my staff at that moment, but I wanted to get this program up and running and I wanted to do it. I had this, these ideas to do it under a different name and everything like that. And so I asked the question, who, not how, and I put an ad out for someone very specific to run the program, not a sports performance coach but an ad out for a sports performance director and eventually someone that wanted to own the program. So the ad was very different that I wrote, but it, it all stemmed from who, not how. It all stemmed from who can get this done, but it's completely out of my hands, right? It's completely not dependent on me that it's going to be successful. It's dependent on someone else. And, and that's what happened with our grip program. We hired Mike Mullen, who came on, and the kid took it and run with it. And, you know, we've sold out every block since he's been there. And that does not happen if I'm running the program, right? And so, yeah, and here's the thing, that concept even holds true to who's training Mike Mullen. So I realized that I didn't also have the time to sit down with Mike, you know, all the time and work with him and help him. So I actually hired my buddy, Brett Klicka, to be Mike's business coach. Right? I didn't even coach him myself. I, did, I farmed that out too. I was like, who not out? All right? and I still meet with Mike for lunch and, and, and stuff like that. But um, I, uh, I even farmed that out. But I'm just following this concept of who not how. And it's been proven to be a really, really successful thing. I mean, I own... My second business, or I think, I don't know what number it is, but my other business is Kiss Marketing. It's an agency for gym owners to help them with their marketing. We run ads and do um, websites, and I haven't advertised it because I can't, because we're too busy, and we literally can't take another client because we have a waiting list like 40 feet. So that's why I don't talk about it that much. I mean, Will begged me, he's like, please stop talking about it on the podcast. He's like, don't mention me, don't mention Kiss. He's like, just we can't, we just can't do it. You gotta stop. <laughs> it's funny. I was like, are you serious? Like, you're telling a marketer not to market a marketing company. So it's like that's just that's just like crazy. Um, so I um, 
So who not have? So, but in that business, it's you know, I, I, no way I, I'm running a digital ag- agency on my own. No way. Will has a skill set that allows it to to run, and that's a concept called who not how. So start to use this, and this is a game changer, right? And I think you know I could be fudging the years here. I think I did learn this in 2020, but I'm, I made it a 2021 lesson. Um, but it, it's the, it's this concept. So definitely read the book. But you don't even need to read the book. Just understand the words. Who, not how. Start asking that question. Start asking that. Um, you know, it's not really a question, I guess. Like, but it's, it's more of a statement. But start saying that more. So when you need something done, say who, not how. Not how am I going to get this done, but rather who can help me do that. All right. So that's lesson number, I guess, four. Um for that so that was a business one um all right let's move to another lesson this is lesson number five um so lesson number five is uh rucking rucking um i'm on a text chain with a couple buddies actually i just mentioned them. brett click is one of them brent gallagher is another uh he's a good buddy of mine from texas got one of the best gyms in the world um kills it so shout out to Brent Gallagher who is also a, a avid listener of this podcast and always sends me positive feedback on the pod. I'm waiting for, Brent I'm waiting for you to say that one sucked Vince let's go get your shit together um, but he's just so nice he's such a nice guy but um, so we're on this text chain and the last guy is a guy named Dr. Chris Moore who's a nutrition guru expert and um, so it's um, it's it's really cool to um it, it, it's really cool to get into these relationships with other people in the industries and they all, they all do something different except for Brent but uh, Chris uh, sent me a book called The Comfort Crisis and The Comfort Crisis is a, a, a book about not uh, about basically how comfortable we are in life about how when you know, the, mo- the most difficult thing we do is exercise in an air conditioned gym you know, with perfectly straight handles on the dumbbells to grab and these, you know, there's nice grips on them. So it makes it easier to grip. It's just like, it's amazing what, um, how easy everything is in life. And it just, it kind of like uses a lot of examples going back to, you know, when we, you know, the, the, the cavemen days and what they had to do and how long they had to carry stuff. And so it's a really good book you should read, but, um, they talk about, you know, rucking in there a lot. And so I started, and I and I have rucked before, I, I started rucking um, probably in 2000, um, probably in 2010, I started rucking. And um, it, w- it was great when I did it and I loved it and I just stopped. But I realized I had this rucksack after I read the book. I was like, I haven't used this thing in 10 years. And um, so I pulled it out and I started every day or every Wednesday and Sunday, I started walking. And I had 40 pounds in the pack and I would just walk for 90 minutes. I'd put a podcast in and Sundays I would go for two hours. And I really enjoyed it, right? Because it's, you're just walking. And I was, all of a sudden I'm like, I feel like, stronger I feel good I feel and I I randomly just said I'm gonna run some hills today and I did the hills and I hadn't doing any running at all and I was freaking crushing these hills I was like crushing these hills I'm like wow like look I'm not not tired I'm not running up this it was like a it's like a 40 minute 40 seconds all the way up this hill full go and I was like I'm not even that tired and I was like dude this is crazy I was doing nothing different in my workouts except for the rocking and um, I feel like just my legs in short, but everything. But it's just a, it's been a really, really cool thing to add. And I do it every Wednesday and every Sunday. And I learned that, you know, you can strength train and do cardio at the same time. Now, I knew that before, but I, hey, I'm 42. I'm, I'm wary and, and, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that, you know, as I get older, I got to take care of my body and not crush my joints. Right. And Hey, walking is just, I'm just walking, but it's just, um, 
it's been a really cool thing to learn. So that's my, I learned, uh, relearned this year. Some of, a lot of these are relearns, um, but I relearned rucking and, and that is uh, number five. So go out there and ruck. We'll read The Comfort Crisis, so it'll kind of get you back on it. Um, it got me eating jerky again. They talked about it like, you know, they would kill this elk and they eat this like pure like elk meat. And I was just like, oh man, that sounds really good. So I started getting uh, like venison and elk jerky. And I, I eat it with my son. Actually, I got him um, a big package of, of game jerky for Christmas. And so he calls it man meat. And so we've been eating lots of man meat. But anyway, so try it. Maybe it's a good thing for you to do. It's a, it's a way that you can listen to this podcast. Like every time, hey, once a week, twice a week, you're going to go and you're going to rock and put a bat weights in a backpack and um, you're going to listen to a good podcast and listen to a book and, you know, get out of your head and it's productive time. So that is uh, number five. Um, so I'm going to cut it there because I'm about, I'm close to my destination and I don't know how long this one was. Maybe I'll do another one for a second. Hold on. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I'll see you guys later. Peace.